Now, Urban Myth Dissolution Center is a game developed by Haka Babunko and published by Shueisha Games and is set to release on February 12th, 2025. And it is this kind of visual novel slash mystery type game, which there's probably a lot of games in the genre that I've seen. But when I played this, I was kind of blown away with how different it felt from those. And I'll be explaining why. And this video will be split into many different parts. I'm going to be talking about the length of the demo, my playing experience with it, the story, the gameplay, different aspects of the gameplay, the visuals, etc. And so I kind of want to go through every single part to kind of give you a comprehensive overview of how the demo for this game was. And so this demo was released as part of Steam Next Fest and was supposed to be only for the month of October, but I have seen a tweet that they did extend it another week. So if you are watching this and it is still before November 7th, you still have a chance to go onto Steam, download it and play it. And the demo is not long, so that's the first thing I want to talk about. The demo is about an hour and a half long. I captured my entire demo, and so it was about an hour and a half long. And just to be completely clear, the way I play games and the way I play this demo is I did every single thing in it. For example, like whenever I got a document, I read it. Whenever like uh, there was like a certain gameplay where I didn't have to technically do everything, I did everything. And I was also taking notes while playing too, so I would like pause a bit and take notes. With all that in mind, my footage was about an hour and 40 minutes long. So if you're playing more casually, it's probably an hour and a half. I would say that's a safe bet for how long the game or the demo of the game actually is so in terms of playing experience i was surprised that the controller support was very good so it's on pc the demo i believe it is only on pc and so i was gonna play using mouse and keyboard but i noticed that they had a controller support option for it and it was very good because usually pc games the controller support is kind of meh for a lot of games this was a demo also so i didn't really expect much but controller support was fantastic in terms of the ui it actually did show the playstation ui which is very rare for games for some reason on pc and the the experience didn't feel hindered at all when i was playing like it felt like the game was designed for a controller, even though like it obviously has a mouse and keyboard option too. So that was really great to see for me because I am a person who plays mostly on PlayStation. If I do get this game, I will be getting it on PlayStation. And so seeing that it works perfectly with the controller was a very nice experience for me. In terms of performance, it ran completely fine. It is a pixel based game. It is a 2D game. It's not doing anything crazy. So I didn't expect there to be performance issues, but nonetheless, there were no performance issues. There were no crashes and it ran perfectly fine, which is great to see in a demo because you know, it is going to be coming out in a few months. It's great to see that it it is running completely fine from here and also one last thing in terms of the playing experience perspective is i noticed that there was no save button or at least i couldn't find one i'm not sure if this is a demo thing or if this is a full game thing but that is something i just want to note it did save i believe there was like an auto save icon that kept coming every once in a while but in terms of the menu there wasn't actually a save button so hopefully that is just a demo thing and not something that's going to carry over to the full game because i do like saving myself especially in games like this so yeah that is the last thing i want to talk about in terms of the playing experience and from here, let's move on to the story of the demo. So the story is about a college student named Azami Fukurai who goes to the Urban Myth Dissolution Center to get rid of the ghost she sees because she, for some reason, is able to see kind of these weird blurry figures whenever she walks around anywhere. But when she goes to the center, she learns that she has clairvoyance and is actually just seeing fragments of the past. So where she thought she was seeing ghosts, she was actually seeing objects or people in the past and that's what she was actually seeing. It's not actually like living or dead beings that she's seeing. And when she's at the center, she's given these glasses so she can see those figures clearer and she's given those glasses by the director of the center named Ayumu Megaruya who also goads her into working for him. That's pretty much what happens when she goes to the center. She's trying to figure out like what power she has like she's very confused and through us helping him out we kind of break some of his property and then from that he kind of playfully threatens you to working for him and that's kind of how the game starts out. So once you start working for him he immediately puts you onto a case and the case ends up involving one of your friends, Mio, where you go to her apartment because she feels that there's a presence in her apartment where there's someone watching her. And slowly you learn that there is someone there. It ends up being the urban myth of the man under the bed, which is a man who has an axe or a knife who wants to kill the victim wherever he is. And from there, Mio tries to run away from him. She returns to her apartment. It is very bloody and the demo ends. So that's kind of like the full synopsis of what you do in the demo. And from here, I'm going to be going into the nitty gritty of how the demo actually was. So far, the actual story of the game has been very interesting in terms of like the mystery aspect. Like, I, honestly, I am hooked. Like, I want to know what's going on. And I love that they're kind of putting little things to make you more interested. For example, there's this one scene where like before you go to Mio's apartment, you're, you kind of meet up with one of your co-workers named Jasmine and you drive over to her apartment. And as you drive off, it just shows a man by a store and he's just like there staring at the camera 
and then it just cuts and you never see him again in the demo so obviously he's going to be a character in the future of the game i don't know who he is but again they're putting stuff that make you want to buy the full game which is pretty smart and in addition to that i'm very interested to see whether this game is supernatural or not that's one of the one of the things i like to focus on when i'm reading or playing a mystery story is what i'm seeing what i'm experiencing is this grounded in reality or not i'm not saying whether supernatural or not is a good or bad thing i just want to know which one it is and i'm very curious to see because again in the in this demo the first case you're taking on this case of the man under a bed which is the urban myth of a man being under your bed and they sometimes show the man under the bed as being this kind of like creepy floaty being but on the other hand it looks like a man in a red hoodie so whether it's actually just a person or if it's actually a myth like a supernatural creature we don't know yet so i'm very interested to see how that evolves throughout the story and lastly i'm very interested to see how the cases are actually going to work in this game so in this demo you literally just work on one case and not only that you don't actually get to finish the case it kind of has a cliffhanger ending where you're trying to you know help your friend out with the man under the bed so i'm curious to see like when you look at the description of the game on steam it says that it's an episodic game or an episodical game i think they call it and i don't know if they mean that they're gonna like release it in episodes or whether the game is just like you know in episodes in terms of cases but i'm very curious to see is it like very discreet cases where like once you're done this Mio case is it just completely gone and you're onto a new case and you never hear from the characters again or is it something where like you do these discreet ish cases but then there's this overall plot thread that connects all of them together to some final big bad hopefully it's the latter i think that's a lot more interesting and that makes more sense for a game but yeah i'm curious to see exactly how it's gonna work because we literally won't know until we get to experience the second case and we won't be able to do that until the full game is out and so yeah i just want to see how the case system is actually going to work the farther we get into the game but moving on from the story let's get into the actual gameplay of the game and how you actually experience it so when it comes to the gameplay of the game i was very surprised with how interactive the game actually was and the reason i say that is because when i looked at this game and i just watched the trailer i was like yeah this is a visual novel it looks like a visual novel it's mostly talking and at least from the visual novel games that i played usually the kind of loop you get into with the visual novel is there's a phase of a lot of talking a lot of cutscenes, you can say like a lot of dialogue and then there's a phase of you playing the game and then that repeats then you go back to the dialogue mode then the game mode the dialogue mode and the game mode and one of the games that i play that's like that is 999 which is a very popular visual novel game and that is a game where like you have a fuck ton of cutscenes, and then once you're done with that you have an escape room and then you have a lot of cutscenes. then you have an escape room and that's how it is and i expected the same for this game so i was kind of like ready to like just like you know listen to a lot of talking and then get into the gameplay mode but something that was really refreshing about this was it didn't feel like that it felt like more like a normal game where i it felt like i was always being asked to do something i was always interacting with the game and i wasn't just sitting and reading mostly which is pretty interesting so instead of it feeling like i'm just reading okay now i'm playing i'm reading and now i'm playing it was like no i'm reading a bit okay no now i gotta do something okay back to reading oh no i gotta do another thing and there's a lot of different types of gameplay in this and so i'm gonna be talking about some of them before getting into the actual gameplay i do want to mention this a small mechanic in the game or the small aspect of the game which is the journal because a lot of the gameplay things connect to that and the journal is pretty much what, you, what you'd expect from a jrpg which is like a journal where the character writes stuff down and so in this game the journal has a relationship tree of the people you met it has a list of urban myths and their accompanying stories and pictures it has case notes for the case you're currently working on and a database of terms places etc so you can kind of open the journal go through all these things whenever you want and as you play the game it'll fill out and you get to kind of add on to the journal as you go the first thing that i want to talk about is actually the way people are added into the journal now in every single jrpg i've played they've usually had a journal and whenever people are added to the journal it's automatic so for example if you go to a new town you meet a character there and if you look at the journal your that character will be there automatically as if the character in the game wrote it what's interesting in this game is you actually have to do it yourself in a way so for example if you meet a character and you talk to them blah 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 and you move on to the story the main character will be like oh i met this person let me write them in my journal and then you'll go into your journal and then you kind of have to fill in the blank of who that person was so for example there's a character in the demo who's a senpai of your friend and so when you add her to the journal the main character talks to herself and she's like okay so who is she again like how is she related to me and then you pretty much have to like you know write the, you have to fill in the blank of the relation that she's a senpai of your friend and then once you do that she's added to the journal and it kind of has like a relationship tree of how she's related to you how she's related to your friend etc and it's such a simple thing it's such an easy thing because you literally just have to fill in one blank per person whenever you add it to the journal but I thought this was really genius because it kind of forces the player to remember every single person so whenever a person you meet a person and they're out of the journal you you have to like specifically think of okay who is this person again how is she related to me and then they get out of the journal so every single person you have in your journal is someone you've had to explicitly think about and how they're related to you and just by doing that little exercise as you play the game I feel like you will have a better idea 
of every single character in the game as compared to if the game just automatically added them to your journal where you might just forget like, yeah, who was that person again? How are they related to me? Where this is like, no, I remember. Yeah, they're the, they're the senpai of my friend because I, I told the game that's who they were. So it's a very small mechanic of adding people to the journal that I thought was very smart in this game. Now, in terms of the rest of the gameplay, at least from what I got to play in the demo, I would kind of cut it into four different sections. So you have the, the hypothesizing, you have the social media research, you have the investigations, and you have the deduction of the urban myth. Now with the hypothesizing, this happened a few times throughout the game. This happens when you're kind of investigating or even like I think randomly throughout the game you whenever you have to drop a hypothesis this kind of gameplay aspect of the game comes up and pretty much what happens is they show you a group of nine phrases and you have a sentence with three blanks and then you have to use those nine phrases to fill in the three blanks to make your hypothesis i have an example right here that happened in the demo it was the first hypothesis that you had to make but they gave you a sentence which was maybe there's a blank trap blank blank and the context of this was you sat on a chair you got hurt while you were sitting and you're trying to figure out why you got hurt and when you got that sentence that's your hypothesis Hypothesis, you have to use nine phrases to fill in the blanks. So some example of the phrases are infused with rage and hate. That's one phrase. Rubber. That's another phrase. Metallic. That's another phrase. In a hidden compartment. That's another phrase, etc. So they had nine phrases that were like this and you have to use them to fill in the blanks of the sentence. You fill in the blanks and then you complete your hypothesis and you get to move on to the story. If you get it wrong, it will tell you which blanks you got wrong so you can switch them out with the other of the choices and then you keep doing that until you get right i'm not sure if like if you get it wrong enough times maybe they'll fill it out for you i'm not sure but i did get some wrong i got this wrong a few times and then i eventually got the correct one and in this case the correct one ended up being maybe there's a poison trap that jabs you with a needle injecting a necrotizing poison so the sentences or the hypotheses can get pretty complex because the phrases can get quite complex but i thought it was a pretty fun mechanic that wasn't too difficult but did make you think about the situation because again there were a few hypotheses in the demo I only got maybe one right in the first try and the other ones I didn't. One small thing I did notice, which I'm, I'm not sure it's a fault for the game or not, but they are clearly looking for a specific answer. And while that's not an issue, there was one hypothesis where I put in my three choices. It made sense grammatically and it made sense in terms of the story, but they said it was wrong. And it turns out what they wanted me to do was switch two of my choices, even though it means the exact same thing. They just had a specific answer they were looking for, and so I had to do that. So that's one small nitpick if I had to give one where, like, they want a very specific answer and they don't really allow, like, different answers, even though it may be the correct answer. Because the one I gave was correct. It was just like they wanted a certain grammar, I guess, to make it work. So that, again, is a very small thing that I noticed with the hypothesis gameplay. But yeah, that's pretty much how the hypothesis gameplay works. And you're going to be using that pretty often when you're actually investigating different fields on your cases. The second form of gameplay that you see in this game is the social media research. And personally, this might be my favorite part of the game. But pretty much when you actually get hired by your director and you actually have to go to your first case, what ends up happening is before you actually get to the case and you're in the car or driving there, you pretty much have to go on social media and research about the case before you get there so you have a good handle on the situation. And I'm assuming this is going to happen every time because at least with the case in this demo, uh, it will spread over two days. So you have to go there on day one and day two. And on both days before you got there, you actually have to go on social media to do some research about the situation. Pretty much what you do is you're pretty much just looking at posts about the situation or the case that's happening. You have to read every single post. You get to press each post to kind of comment on it. So the main character and your coworker Jasmine will comment on the post. And and if you put your glasses on, you get to see these jiggling letters in some of the posts, which means that you're able to search those letters into the social media engine and then get more posts and et cetera, et cetera. You keep going down that rabbit hole of social media posts until you get enough information to move on with the game. But I thought it was pretty interesting and pretty fun because you kind of get a good context for what the case is in a very natural way. It's not like there's a person just narrating what happened in the case. It's not like you have to just go there completely new and kind of figure out the case from there. It's like... No, realistically, you'd go on social media, you see what people are saying. And the fun part is like, you don't know what's true, what's not. It's like real social media. There's a lot of people saying true stuff. There's some people saying false stuff. There's some assholes. You just don't know what you're going to get. And I really like the aspect of like the rabbit hole where you actually do have to look at the social media feed take a term, search it, go deeper into it. Then from there, you have to find another term, search that and go deeper into it. I thought that was very cool. One thing that made it even deeper, which is very interesting, is that you're allowed to mix different search terms together to get more specific search results. Um, I can't remember the, the example that they used in the game, but I may be showing on the screen right now. But for example, I got a search term, I think it was a girl's name, and I got another search term, which is I think was a description. And if I put those in the search bar together, they gave me more specific posts about the girl that was related to that adjective whatever it was and so that's an example where like yeah you can actually get deeper into this it's not like you just have to go through every single search term that you find because you won't ever miss a search term it's very obvious when the word is kind of jiggling and that's when you have to kind of analyze and use it as a search term but the fact that 
you actually have to have the the smarts to take two specific terms see that they probably may have some different results put them in the search bar search them and find more results it's pretty cool so that's something i kind of appreciated about this gameplay aspect too and once you actually do that and learn enough you just are prompted to finish the game mechanic and move on and actually get to the case there are some small critiques that i did want to mention one very very small critique and this is something that doesn't really have to come in the game but i noticed that every single comment on the social media that you see or every single post you see you're able to press and have the main character comment on it which is very cool i love it the issue is not all of the comments are actually necessary so for example there'll be, there'll be some where like when i examine it the main character will actually say something useful but there are some where like when you when you press it the main character won't say anything they'll just say like a word response or be like okay yeah whatever and so in those cases i feel like the game just should not let you examine those i think it would kind of speed up the gameplay too where for example like when, when you're in on looking at the social media every single post has a symbol showing that you can examine it. I think what they should have done is that only some of them have an, a symbol to examine it, just so whenever you examine, you know you're getting something useful out of it. Because right now, you can examine every single one of them, and as someone who kind of wants to get the most out of the game, I will examine every single post, and the fact that they're not all useful is a bit annoying, but again, this is a very small criticism which they don't need to change in the game, but it's something that I would like where they just made the important posts examinable and the ones that aren't to just like make them not examinable like they don't even have the symbol to examine them and uh one last thing i wish they had was and this is something that i i actually do wish they add into the final game i'm not sure they will or maybe this is a thing and i didn't notice it but like i mentioned you're able to cross reference multiple search terms and search about them the thing is you never know whether that's possible or not at least from like when i was playing so for example i was doing the social media gameplay I finished and they were like, okay, you can leave if you want now. You can move on to the game. I didn't. I kept trying to do different combinations of search terms. And I was, I was actually able to find another combination. And when I put that into the search bar, I got more social media posts. And I was able to read and get more information about the situation. It wasn't actually useful in a gameplay sense. It was just useful for me, like me as a player playing. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I actually learned more about the case. Or I learned more about a character. And so I wish the game would have told me that there was more that I could have done. Like, I think what they should do is when they prompt you to leave the social media, it should probably say somewhere like on the corner like oh you still have more to do or something like that or there's more or there's like x more search terms you get to you can still look into and then once you're done looking into every single search term or every single combination of search terms then it'll say okay complete like a green check mark or something just to let you know that you've done everything and now you're free to go because with jrpgs i really like doing every single thing i can and i would hate of just moving on from the social media gameplay knowing later that there was some other information that i could have learned so hopefully in the final game i'm not sure if there will be hopefully in the final game they have some kind of indicator showing that like hey you still have some search terms you can get you can still look into before you leave or something like that i'm not sure but yeah that is us uh, another small piece of criticism with the social media part of the game and we'll move on to the next part of the game which are the investigations now the investigations are a pretty simple part of the game it's kind of obvious what you will be doing based on the name but i would say it's probably the most important part because you're actually investigating that's what the game is about and pretty much what happens is when you're at the site you get to talk to the people at the site you get to investigate different objects at the site you get to investigate past vestiges which means that you get to put on your glasses you kind of see like different figures or different objects and you get to investigate that and based on that you get to move forward in the investigation so when i was playing the demo i was in mio's apartment i got to talk to mio i got to talk to her friend you kind of got to examine the shelf her bed the bathroom and then as you kind of investigate stuff you get more dialogue from mio and her friend and as you keep kind of going through that loop you finally finish and the game moves on the entire goal of the investigation and i'm assuming this is gonna be the goal of every single investigation you do in this game is you're trying to figure out which urban myth is behind the case that you're looking into so you come into mio's apartment she said she noticed someone in her apartment and the director tells you that you have to figure out which urban myth is related to this case and that's pretty much the entire goal of the investigation and the actual investigation difficulty is pretty easy it's not like one of those games where you can actually get stuck like it's not a puzzle game for example like other visual novel games like 999 that i played you can legitimately get stuck when you're doing the escape room segments if you don't know what what you're doing because you don't know what's examinable you don't know when you have all the objects to finish the puzzle where in this game every single thing in the room that you can examine has an indicator on it every single person has an indicator on it when you put on your glasses every single thing you can examine again has an indicator on it so you'll never get stuck all you have to do is examine every single object and talk to every single person and you just keep doing that until you're done so if a person doesn't have any new dialogue that means you have to examine more things if you're done examining all the things that means you have to talk to a person and that's how it was in the demo maybe in the future of the game the, the, the investigation will get more complex i'm not sure but at least right now it is simple enough where you just have to talk to everyone touch everything and you will figure out the answer to the case which i'm not against that's fine 
I like games that are simple like this, and so I was okay with the investigation loop in this game. And one last thing about the investigations is that I noticed that these investigations or these cases aren't always confined to one day. So again, in this demo, we were just working on one case. We didn't even finish the case, and what we worked on it was over the span of two days, which I found, which I thought was interesting. I thought it would just be like, you go on an investigation, you finish in a day, and you're good. But we went there in, in one day, we investigated a bit, we left, it advanced, like what happened to Mio advanced. You came back the second day, you did the social media again, you investigated more. And at the end of the demo, it ended on a cliffhanger. But I assume when you go back into the full game, you're going to go back to investigate again. So that is something that's very interesting where you're going to be doing the social media, the investigation loop multiple times as you go through the case. And so the last part of the gameplay that I want to talk about is the actual deduction of the urban myth, which again, I said is the entire point of the investigation. And the way this works is your director who has the power of vision is able to always see everything. That's just kind of something he can do. And so he calls you once you're far enough in the investigation and he pretty much walks you through the entire case, talks about every clue you have and pretty much picks out what the urban myth was and the way this works in terms of the gameplay is just him talking about the entire case from beginning to end and every time he wants an answer you have to answer it for example if you notice something while you're investigating you're gonna have to remember that because he may ask you about it for example there was one detail that i noticed while i was playing the game where the toilet seat was up and the character also the main character also like commented about it oh the toilet seat is up that's weird Mio usually is a neat freak and there wasn't more about that and when you're actually going through this urban myth deduction section of the game that came up so uh the director was like uh did you notice something about the apartment which proves that there was someone in the apartment and you pretty much have to pick like oh yeah the toilet seat was up and that proves that that it was a male intruder and that it wasn't Mio because she's a neat freak and she would never keep it up it was something like that and so I thought it was very interesting it wasn't like very surface level it was some some stuff some of the things that I picked you did have to kind of think about and by the end of the entire gameplay segment the director will pretty much tell you okay based on all the clues that you found investigating this location the urban myth is blank and in this demo the urban myth was called the man under the bed and that's kind of where you move on forward with that that's kind of that aspect of the case or the investigation you figure out the urban myth i'm not sure where you go with that is there only one urban myth per case like is the urban myth section of this case done now because we know what it is maybe there, there'll be cases in the future where like you think it's one urban myth but the more you investigate it actually ends up being another so it's very interesting and also found it interesting because i mentioned before that in your journal they list some urban myths that you learn from conversations we already had like eight maybe urban myths in the journal and this was like at the ninth one or something that you unlocked so i wonder if like those old urban myths that you saw in your journal like are are they gonna be in the game or are they just there for you to kind of like know as a player or just to be you know entertained as a player so i thought that was very interesting too where like i thought the journal would only have the urban myths that you work on but they already had like a bunch of urban myths that weren't even related to this case which was very cool but yeah that's pretty much the entire gameplay segment of this game you have the hypothesizing you have the journal and the adding of the journal you have the social media research the investigations and the deducing of the urban myth and finally let's talk about the visuals of the game i think this is probably one of the most interesting parts of the game because i think if you watch the trailer this is the first thing that's going to come out to you is the visuals which is these this pixel style but it's, it's this beautiful style of pixel visuals which i usually don't see in the game usually when i think of pixel visuals it's usually very simplistic or like 8-bit or 16-bit or 32-bit or whatever this game is clearly not like that where the cutscenes and the actual character portraits when you're talking they're like they could have been hand-drawn if they wanted to but they specifically stylized it in a pixel style which looks absolutely beautiful the animations in the game like in the cutscenes and when people are talking are really nice that's something i noticed specifically when characters are talking they're very expressive and emotive and they move a lot like you'd expect them to just to be like moving up and down maybe have like a few set poses but they're like animated they're moving like i think the main character is like twiddling her thumb a lot she has like different uh, expressions and i was very impressed with like the different level of emotions it didn't really feel that repetitive either like it just felt like someone was talking which is very cool and that i appreciated and also they have this um separate pixel style when you're actually playing the game when you're actually like walking around it becomes kind of like this 2d side scroller type game and the pixel style there is very different I, I don't know what it is it's like probably like 16 bit maybe i'm not sure if you look at the game they didn't really have to use a pixel style if you think about it like they could have made everything hand drawn but i think the reason they did it is because it makes it a lot more natural when you go between the styles of the hi-fi of the portraits and the cutscenes and the lo-fi of the gameplay and because they're pixel style and because the only difference really is the density of the art i think kind of makes it more natural to have it in a pixel style as opposed to if they had like 
say 16-bit or whatever pixel style of the gameplay and then you had hand-drawn art for the cutscenes. I think the, the decision to make both of them pixel-based was very smart. But even more than that, the thing that really strikes you when you're watching the trailer is the game is pretty much monochromatic or I guess diachromatic uh, if, if you want to be specific, but the entire palette of the game is blue and the only accent color they have is red. So they'll whatever, like I think if you see blood in the game, it'll probably be red. If you want to make accents, something will be red. If you see those spirits uh, th through your clairvoyance ability, it'll be red. And so they literally just have those two colors and they're kind of, you know, various shades. And you really never think about it. Like you, you would think that when you, if you're playing like a mostly monochromatic game that you'd be thinking about that. But like after the first five seconds, I literally never thought about it. It felt like the exact same as if I was playing a full color game. And I found that very impressive. Like their actual art design is just very, very fucking well done in this game. And yeah, if like, I, I would say like, even if you're not interested in visual novels, just go into this game just for the art, you will appreciate it. It's just, is very nice looking. And that's a wrap for my thoughts on the demo. I kind of went over the gameplay, the story, the visuals, what I thought about it, any critiques I had. I, all I want to say is I'm very much looking forward to the game. I want to see, you know, how it is when it comes out. Maybe, maybe there'll be another demo in the future. I'm not sure. I I was surprised to see that it is coming out in a while like it's not coming out soon uh this demo was very like you know well baked like it didn't feel like it was like early on or anything so i thought the game was gonna come out like within a few weeks but it's coming out in like about three months it's coming out in february 2025 so i wonder maybe they'll do like a second demo maybe when you're closer because I'm sure that by the time the game comes out, I will have completely forgotten about like what I played in this demo. And so it'd be nice if they maybe had like a demo, which was the entire chapter one or case one. That'd be very cool. And that you get to transfer that save data to the full game. I think that'd be like a perfect thing to do with this game. But yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it. I love the characters. I love the writing. I love the gameplay. I love the visuals. Everything about this demo, I was very much enjoying. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Oh.